The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome to the Exxon, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, and for the next four hours, I'm your host and your guide as together we cross the time-space continuum to this place that I call the Exxon. It's a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. And the Exxon comes to you Monday through Friday from 10 p.m. Eastern until 2 a.m. Eastern. Right here live and around the world on the Talkstar Radio Network and our fine family of broadcast affiliates across the United States, Canada, Central America, the Caribbean, South America, the Pacific Rim, Asia, Europe. And the X-Zone is growing and growing and growing. And, of course, if there's any place on Earth that is not covered by the X-Zone, it's available on TalkstarRadio.com streaming audio. My uh, producer tonight at Master Control is the one and only Superman. Hey, Superman, nice working with you again this week. Hope you had a super weekend. Uh, by the way, we are back live on Zone TV at www.xzonetv. You can watch and listen to our show live at www.xzonetv. On this, uh, on tonight's show, I have Gail Martin. She'll be joining me after the first break. Robert W. Morgan from the American Anthropological Research Foundation will be with us. William Federer will be talking about what most Americans don't know about Islam. And in hour number four, the one and only Patrick Cook with the Cook Report. That is tonight here on the X Zone. Now, today is Monday, January the 21st. On this date in 1908, New York City made it against the law for women to smoke in public. In 1915, the Kiwanis Club was formed. Today is, uh, let me see, Emma Bunton of the Spice Girl turns 32. She's known as Baby Spice. Singer Billy Ocean turns 58 today. He sang... When the going gets tough, the tough get going these days. When uh, 2 a.m. rolls around, he's the one getting up to go. Uh, Let me see. It's also Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And what you need to know, well, as part of her punishment for misdemeanor drunk driving, Lindsay Lohan is going to have to spend time at the morgue. I understand she's going to have a real dead time there. Suzanne Plachette, who played Emily Hartley on the Bob Newhart Show, died Saturday. She was 70. Alan Melville, 84, who played Sam the Butcher on The Brady Bunch, died of cancer Thursday in Los Angeles. Dr. Phil is feeling sorry. I guess he talked to himself, and he says that he's sorry for what he said about Brittany, uh, whatever that was. Chess master Bobby Fischer uh, died Thursday of kidney failure in Iceland after a long illness. He was 64. And from the medical corner, people who take vitamin D supplements appear to have a lower risk of death from any cause. And this according to a new European study that was published in the Archives of Internal Medicine. Men are the unhappiest uh, between the ages of 35 and 45, a time when most are likely to have midlife crisis. And this is coming from London's Evening Standard. The study was uh, conducted by the British government. And uh, Georgia Frontier, a former entertainer who inherited the Los Angeles Rams and moved the the team to St. Louis in 1995, died Friday. She was 80 years old. Uh, Let me see. Also, we have the top five surprises in the new Cloverfield movie. By the way, it's the number one film. It grossed uh, something like $41 million this past weekend. Uh, Let me see. Number one would have destroyed the Big Apple, but the New York Giants defense had a good time. Number two, monsters stopped by writer's strike. Number three, Creature uh, creature really was only looking to meet Seinfeld. Uh, Number four, only half of the city destroyed by monster, the other half by Lindsay Lohan having a bad night. And number five, 
The monster gets dizzy from handheld camera action. When we come back from the news at the top... Of, um, no, wait a minute. It's not the news yet, is it? When we come back from this two-minute commercial break, I'll be joined by Gail Martin. And she is the author of The Summoner and The Blood King in the Chronicles of the Necromancer series. And Gail will be joining us to tell us all about her new books right here on the Exxon Radio Show on the Talkstar Radio Network and on Exxon TV. one 877 is our toll-free number. And I will be back in two minutes with Gail Martin as the Exxon continues live and around the world from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine like hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining room can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you're visiting, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic Felsmere. Or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, old Florida cuisine at its best. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Are you interested in the paranormal, ghosts, UFOs, or psychic phenomenon? Join me, Tim Bartley, co-host of Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, coming mid-January 2017 to the XZBN. We will channel spirits live and talk to them, revealing all kinds of amazing information. Spiritual attachments will be found and removed on the show, and so much more. To find out when you can listen to Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, visit www.xzbn.net for listeners on both sides of the veil. Must have been one heck of a night. I can't remember a darn thing about that night. Welcome back, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. Gail Martin is our special guest. And uh, Gail is the author of The Summoner and The Blood King in the Chronicles of the Necromancer series. The Blood King makes, makes its own international debut February the 1st. For book updates, tour information, and contact details, visit www.chroniclesofthenecromancer.com. Gail kicks off a new tour, a new book tour, February the 1st. That will take her to North Carolina, Arizona, Virginia, and Maryland. And, Gail, welcome to the Exxon. How are you doing these days? Well, thanks, Rob. I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty busy, but things are going well. Excellent, excellent. Um, the Blood King finishes the story uh, that began in the Summoner. Uh, mm-hmm. Your world in the books include magic, ghosts, and vampires, which are treated as everyday experiences. Now, how does your world of the Winter Kingdoms expand in the new book? Well, the Blood King, as you mentioned, finishes off the story that began mm-hmm. in The Summoner. So we get to see a lot more, not only of the characters from that book, but the world. And we start to see how really being dead or undead is just another part of life. And uh, I really have enjoyed playing with that concept. We are 
so afraid of those things in our world, and, and you know, at least in the U.S., we've really convinced ourselves that death is optional. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very interesting to play with some of those concepts and see them from more of an extension of life point of view instead of some kind of grotesque dis- distortion. I mean, it, it's just fun to play with the reality. Now, in your books, uh, you deal with the paranormal in a very nonchalant way. Interacting with ghosts uh, is the norm. Um, how do you create this the world of the Winter Kingdoms? Well, you know, I think some of that came uh, w- when I was a teenager and my grandmother died, and, and uh, she died at home. And uh, there was a moment when I was alone with her in uh, alone with her body in her bedroom, and I got creeped out and scared. And then I realized, well, you know. My grandmother in life never would have hurt me. Why would I think if she could come back after death, she would suddenly be a monster? She'd still be my grandmother. She wouldn't hurt me if she could come back, so I wasn't afraid anymore. And that really stuck with me, and I started to play with the idea of why do we tend to, in fiction, immediately assume that ghosts uh, are you know, vicious or evil mm-hmm. or, or malevolent. Uh, if they were good people before they died, they're good people after they died. If they were terrible people before they died, they're probably terrible people afterwards. And I started playing with the idea of, well, what would your extended family look like if it were really extended, if people could remain part of the family after death? And uh, playing with that has been a lot of fun. Why do you think uh, people have such a, fas- a fascination with the paranormal these days? You know, it's interesting because it's it's become pretty darn mainstream. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you take a look at the lineup on the TV channels, if you take a look at, at uh, you know, even some of the genres that used to be pretty straightforward, like romance, everything's gone paranormal. And uh, I don't know. You know, some people blame it on, at least in the States, you know, this kind of waking up and realizing you're mortal after all, after 9-11. Uh, gee, you know, it shouldn't have taken that to make us realize at some point the merry-go-round stops um i don't know maybe it's more of a reevaluation. the baby boomers are finally hitting 60 and the generation that never thought it was going to get old is looking in the mirror and going hmm 30 more years maybe top wonder where we go from there um i'm not entirely sure but there's some fun things to play with now your main character is a summoner a sorcerer with the ability to intercede between the living and the dead now, most fantasy necromancers are bad guys, but yours is a hero. How come? Well, again, it goes back to playing with that idea of why do we assume that just because people are dead, they're bad? Well, um, l- let's see. If they they come back from the dead, something must be wrong somewhere. Well, you know, maybe they, uh, honestly, maybe they just had a conversation to finish. Um, and that's one of the things, you know, you hear so often people mm-hmm. say when, when someone passes away, Gee, if I, I just could have one more conversation with them, or if I could just ask them where they left the will, or, or I, I wish I knew where they put something. Well, you know, what if you really could? What if there was someone who could open up that opportunity for you, whether it was to um, fix, you know, the last time you saw somebody, you had a fight, and then they died, and you never got to make it right, or just the chance to tell someone goodbye? Um, that would be really powerful, let alone the fact that if you did have somebody coming back from beyond the grave Mm -hmm. to make your life miserable, it would be nice to have someone who could make them go away. So the summoner uh, in my book performs that function of being able to intercede. And that's different from a lot of fantasy and role-playing game summoners who tend to be the shadowy evil guy who raises these skeletal legions of the dead. Um, I think it's a lot more to really kind of think through and play with my way. 1-877-528-8255 one 877 is our toll-free number. My name's Rob McConnell. My very special guest at this hour is Gail Martin. And her website is www.chroniclesofthenecromancer.com. Uh, Gail, have you ever had a paranormal experience yourself? You know, I haven't, but I know a lot of people whom I have great regard for who have. And I will say that I have enough respect for paranormal paranormal phenomenon that I don't go looking for an experience. Uh, I enjoy watching a lot of the shows on TV where people go ghost hunting or go, uh, you know, telling stories about haunted places. Mm -hmm. Personally, um, 
I don't think I would sign up to spend the night in a place that was reputed to be haunted. Um, I've just got too much respect for the phenomenon. So, no, I haven't, but I don't go looking for it either. I, then, you know, like, I have been on so many ghost tours. I have been to haunted places uh, throughout the United States and Canada. I've gone to uh, places where allegedly UFOs are spotted on a regular basis. And, and I have to admit, I have yet to have an encounter with a spirit or anything within the paranormal. Well, it's interesting because I know some people who, uh, you know, are by all normal qualifications, mm -hmm. um, you know, quite quite normal, quite well adjusted, and you know, when they find out what I read about, what I write about, they, you know, figure maybe they can tell me what they've experienced, and um, you know, it's certainly very real to them, mm -hmm. and I have no reason to not believe that that was their experience, and it just kind of makes me. Think about it and say, well, it's certainly possible, exactly. but it's not within my personal experience. Exactly. All is possible in this realm. Now, um, have, have you gone on ghost hunts? Have you da dabbled in the paranormal? I haven't gone on ghost hunts. I, I have been on some ghost tours, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in, in some historic uh, villages and some places like that, and I think it's fascinating. I love watching the shows on that, uh, you know, I'm quite addicted to haunted history and most haunted in some of those shows. Um, but, you know, again, as, as we said, I, I haven't seen anything, um, although I find it fascinating. Now, you seem to enjoy uh, turning the conventional expectations of the paranormal upside down, inside out, and you're... Uh, in your necromancer, who is a good guy, the vampires aren't necessarily evil, and the ghosts are treated like extended family members. Now, where did you get these ideas come? To, where did these ideas come from? Well, it, it again comes back to, uh, you know, how afraid are you of death? Is it some big black hole after which everything goes away, or is it just a doorway to something that's different? Um, you know, personally, I think it's more of a doorway, and so I'm curious to think what's on the other side and what might it be like. And uh, the whole concept of, well, how many different ways can you come back and for different reasons really fascinates me. So, um, you know, I, I explained a little bit about how I started to think about ghosts coming back and interacting positively with people. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you hear about people who maybe say they have a sense that they're dear departed mother is still looking over them and, and still watching out for them or that they have a sense that their grandmother was, was with them even though she's you know, died 30 years ago. Um, so I think there's a lot of comfort to be taken from that. Um, and as far as the vampires, again, it comes back to if you were a bad person before you were brought across, you'll probably look to misuse the ability afterwards. Uh, if not, then there's the whole issue of dealing with a trauma that you didn't ask for that's radically changed your existence and having to sort out your ethics in completely uncharted territory for essentially immortality. And that really fascinates me. Who would you become if you could essentially live forever and why? And uh, I really enjoy playing with those ideas. Tell me, would you really want to live forever? I don't think I would. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it would be very difficult. You know, you talk to people even now who live 90, 100 years, and they've outlived all of their their family. They've yeah. certainly outlived their spouses, their children, sometimes their grandchildren, all of their colleagues, uh, their friends, and their time. I think it would take an extraordinary person to be able to reinvent themselves as the times change. Um, even if they could make new relationships, uh, we're so much a product of our own time. And that's one of the things that I really enjoy uh, writing the, the uh, vampire characters, I call them Vyash Maru in my book, is you know, we don't often see inside the minds of vampire characters very deeply. And thinking about not just the wealth you could accumulate over several lifetimes, but the scars. Uh, really fascinate me. Yeah, I guess you could live out. You could outlive those you owe money to. <laughs> that would be one of the yeah. benefits. A thirty-year mortgage doesn't look so long. 
kind of say, yeah, sure, I'll sign it. Where, where do I sign it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it applies to car loan. Hey, it's just a blink of the Mind eye. Mind you, you'd have a hell of a time getting life insurance. You know, How old are you? 765? <laughs> On the other hand, you're a good risk. Hmm. I don't know if an insurance company would call that a good risk. <laughs> All right, stand by, Gail. You and I have to go to a commercial break. We'll be back in a couple of minutes after the news. My name's Rob McConnell. Gail Martin is our special guest. We're talking about her new books. Are you ready for this? The Summoner and the Blood King and the Chronicles of the Necromancer series. Her website is www.chroniclesofthenecromancer.com. Gail Martin and I will return on the other side of this commercial break with the news right here on the Talkstar Radio Network and on Exxon TV. one 877 is toll-free. You can always email me, exxon at talkstarradio.com. Chat with us live here in our radio TV studio at talkstarradio at hotmail.com and our two websites, www.exxonradio.com and www.exxontv.com. My name's Rob McConnell. I'll be back after this break as we continue live and around the world right here on Talkstar. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. And welcome back to the x My name is Rob McConnell. Gail Martin is our special guest. Her website is www.chroniclesofthenecromancer.com. And Gail discovered her passion for science fiction, fantasy, and ghost stories in elementary school. The first story she wrote at the age of five was about a vampire. Her favorite TV uh, show as a preschooler was Dark Shadows. At age 14, she decided to become a writer. She enjoys attending science fiction, fantasy conventions, renaissance fairs, and living history sites. She is married, has three children, a Himalayan cat, and a golden retriever. Uh, Gail... At the age of five, how did you know about vampires? (laughs) Well, I'm not quite sure what my mom was thinking at the time, but I mentioned the TV show Dark Shadows. Mm -hmm. Um, It was basically a daytime soap opera that was uh, kind of this gothic show with vampires and witches and warlocks and werewolves and all kinds of good stuff set on this really creepy Massachusetts estate. And I was just fascinated with it and from that time on uh you know anytime i could get a hold of a ghost story or something like that um i you know brought it home from the library or or uh, you know found a way to read it so yeah i i got an early start now uh at the age of 14 you decided to become a writer what was your inspiration to become a writer i think it was the first time it really occurred to me that um you know, writers weren't somehow just born um, fully published, that they had to come from somewhere, and at some point, you know, they were all 14, too, and trying to decide what to do, and I loved books so much. It was just kind of like a light bulb that went on in my head and said, you know, if they can do it, so can I. That's what I want to be. Okay, and as as far as, as your favorite author, who is that? 
Well, that is tough because there are so many great books that have mm-hmm. really made an impression on me over the years. Um, I don't get as I don't get as much of a chance to read other people's stuff now because. Writing my own stuff is pretty time-consuming, and I, I still have a day job. I still own my own marketing firm. Um, but, wow, um, you know, in science fiction and fantasy, I love Mercedes Lackey and David Drake and Stephen Brust and Joel Rosenberg and David Eddings and, of course, Tolkien and uh, Anne Rice. Uh, you know, and that's just for starters. What in, you know, What inspiration would you have or what words of advice would you have for young budding authors listening to us tonight? Wow. I, I think the, the best thing you can do is just never give up. Keep writing. The longer you write, the better you'll get at it. Find a circle of friends who are mm-hmm. very supportive and start telling them stories. Uh, you know, that's really the way I started. Um, I started writing for the amusement of a handful of three or four friends. And that helped me learn how to become a better writer. Uh, you know, when I was in high school and middle school, I was very into writing fan fiction, which is a, a great way to practice. That's where, you know, if you have a favorite TV show or a favorite uh, movie, mm-hmm. you write your own episodes for it. And that's a fun middle ground because the characters and the situations are, are already developed. You just get to work on plot and, and um, development. So it's a, a great uh, practice ground. And gradually... Um, what I wrote got better, and the circle of friends got broader, and uh, finally got to the point where I felt confident that it was good enough to take it to the world. Now, is it harder or easier to write the second book in the series? I think it's easier because you at least know how the whole publishing cycle mm-hmm. works. Um, the story was very fully fleshed out in my imagination. So I knew where the plot was going. But even then, there are details that surprise me while I'm writing it uh, or things that come to mind that I really hadn't planned on putting in, but now they make sense, so they're there. Um, It's very much a fully imagined world for me, so coming up with what's going on in it really isn't tough. Tell me, what was it like? the very first time you held one of your books in your hand. Oh, absolutely amazing. It's, it's up there with giving birth. Um, you know, <laughs> you asked about uh, advice for a budding writer. Yeah. For years, tw- I mean, we're probably talking about 20 years here, Wh- whenever I would walk into a bookstore, it was a ritual for me to find the science fiction shelves and find the place on the shelf, normally right next to George R. R. Martin, where my book would have been. And I would put my hand on the shelf in that space and close my eyes and say to myself, mine's going to be here someday. So I can tell you that the first time last February that I walked into a Borders Books and I put my hand out and my book actually was there was an amazing experience. You're already working on book three, scheduled for a 2009 release. Can you tell us anything about it? Yeah. um, In fact, it's, um, it's already in first draft. So, actually, it's about first and a half draft, about halfway through the second draft of it. So, it's coming along real well. Uh, it will pick up immediately after the Blood King, and there's a big mess to clean up. Um, there's been a usurper king, and there's been quite a bit of upset. And uh, I think one of the fascinating threads in the third book, which at least tentatively we're calling Dark Haven, uh, is that there are moments in history after which nothing is ever the same again. Uh, And sometimes things that wouldn't have upset the apple cart under normal conditions just suddenly now take down the whole house of cards. And in the case of the Winter Kingdom, uh, Jared's coup was one of those moments. And so it will continue to have repercussions not only for the main country, Margoland, but for the rest of the kingdoms as well. And, of course, with a title like Dark Haven, you can be guaranteed we're going to spend a lot more time in that uh, land holding, which is the uh, sanctuary for the vampires. We'll be seeing a lot more of them. All right. Um, tell me, uh, you've, you, you're a Penn State alumni, uh, the university behind the... 
paranormal state TV show. Did you ever have any experiences on campus with the buildings that are reportedly haunted? <laughs> well, everybody knows not to go up in the stacks at Petit Library at night, uh, mm -hmm. way back there. And, and, you know, if you've ever been up in a college university library, they're, they're huge buildings, and the stacks are the um, older books, and the less commonly used books. So they're up on a third or fourth floor. There's nobody up there. It's completely quiet, creepy quiet. You know, there's no, tra there's no foot traffic. It's only really hardcore researching grad students who ever go up there. And um, the rumor has it that many, many years ago there was a grad student who was murdered up in the stacks. Uh, in Petit. I don't know whether that's actually true or not, but the rumor persists, and I don't think that there's anybody who's gone to gone to school on uni on main campus that hasn't heard about it. So um, since I was a grad student, I, I felt well warned to stay out of the stacks late at night. And there's some other buildings as well that are reportedly haunted either by students or faculty that just can't let go of tenure. And and how many people actually have encounters with these with these entities, or, or are they just a gimmick? I have no idea. I mean, they, you know, they certainly add to the campus culture. Mm -hmm. um, I never knew anybody personally who had seen one. Uh, it, it's creepy being up there. I can imagine imagining that you've seen something. Uh, you know, it is kind of the perfect setting. <laughs> if somebody knocked you off up there, nobody would find you for days. Um, so, you know, your mind starts playing tricks on you and thinking, well, you know, that could really happen up here. But I never met anybody who actually had seen one. Now, with all the TV shows on haunted locations, historic ghosts, channeling spirits and magic, the paranormal, you know, it's becoming normal. <laughs> you know, how does that affect fantasy? I think it's a fiction. wonderful thing for fantasy because it really kind of brings it into the mainstream. Um, you know, many years ago, people who wrote about rockets and mm -hmm. space flight were just absolutely crazy because everybody knew that sort of thing would never happen. Well, you know, we now have at least had some experience with rockets and space flight to say, well, okay, maybe they weren't totally crazy. And I think, you know, fantasy pre-Harry Potter and, and, you know, maybe before about the last ten years, was really one of those things that you only kind of admitted after a secret handshake to folks that you read because... Uh, Either that or half a 40 ounce of Jack Daniels. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you really had to be in the club before yeah. you'd admit that you read that stuff to people. And now, uh, you know, I think Harry Potter was a, a terrific door opener for a lot of people who mm -hmm. may have just read it because it was so popular and then said, hey, this stuff isn't half bad and gone on to find more in the genre. But between the TV shows, you know, I've got a daughter who absolutely loves Charmed reruns. Um, you know, all of those TV shows that whether they've got an angel or a ghost or someone with magical powers, um, you can't turn a channel without finding it anymore. So I think it's exposed a lot of people to something and brought it out of the weird fringes into, hey, this stuff's pretty cool. Do you see the television uh shares going the same way they did with every fad that in a couple of years it's just going to be dead again and nobody's going to be talking about it well i think everything is you know kind of a fad and it comes and goes mm -hmm. but once you've exposed people to something if they find out that they like it they're going to keep coming back for it even if the fad moves on so People who discovered fantasy fiction because they saw the Harry Potter movies or they watched Charmed or they watched, you know, Touched by an Angel or something on TV, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're probably going to stay with that genre uh, after the fad is gone. And I think these things kind of come and go in cycles, so I imagine if it does die down for a while, no pun intended, uh, boom, boom. it'll it'll be back up uh you know, something else will trigger and will come back around. Um, you know, kind of like shoulder pads. Now you've Never got really a busy. Go away. You, you've got a busy book tour coming up. Can you tell us about it? Sure. Uh, I am doing a lot of signings in North Carolina in mm -hmm. February, and of course, I'm, I'm based in Charlotte, so that's kind of uh, home turf stomping ground. Uh, then in March, I'm going to be at the Phoenix Renaissance Festival. 
Um, and I found out last year that Renaissance festivals, amazingly enough, are uh, very popular with people who also like to read fantasy adventure. That I had gambled on that and turned out to be right. So I'm going to be at the Phoenix Renaissance Festival in March. I'll be at the Raven Con uh, Science Fiction and Fantasy Convention in Richmond, Virginia in April. Mm -hmm. I'll be at Balticon uh, in Baltimore, Maryland in May. And then I'll also be at uh, Con Carolinas in Charlotte uh, the last weekend in May. And I, today I just received my invitation to be a guest author at Dragon Con in Atlanta uh, over Labor Day weekend. And then I'll be back at the Charlotte Renaissance Festival in October. All right. Uh, you're a busy lady. You've got another book on the go. You go to all these festivals. You go to all these conventions. Where do you find time for you? <laughs> well, fortunately, I really, really love the writing. And I'm pretty well organized. Don't forget, I also run a business, and I've got three kids, and I teach for a university. Just thought I'd mention that. Um, I'm really well organized. And um, believe it or not, I do pretty much knock off work around 5.30 or 6 and spend the evening with the kids. Now, we Good may be you. sitting around watching Babylon 5. <laughs> that was my, my big Christmas present this year was I got all five seasons of Babylon 5 on disc. So I'm now loving catching up on that. That was one of the classics, wasn't it? Oh, it was, it was very well plotted. The characterizations were great. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm finding that watching it the second time through is just as good. So um, big surprise. I've got a whole family that loves reading science fiction and fantasy. Um, they'll all be coming with me to Dragon Con. They don't make it to all of the uh, conventions with me. But my teenage daughter went on book tour with me last year when we did Pennsylvania and Ohio. And so, um, and they're, you know, my, my husband and my two older kids are my best proofreaders. They uh, read the drafts. They give me their quite candid feedback, and they're mm -hmm. extremely helpful. So it's uh, kind of a family business. I was, going to, I was going to ask you what the rest of the family uh, thinks of your, your, your success as an author. Well, you know, I am absolutely thrilled that it's something my two teenagers are very proud of. Uh, if you have teenagers, you know that sometimes those moments are few and far between. Oh, but, tell me about it, yeah. Um, you know, my my kids are very happy to recommend the books to their friends, and uh, I'm I'm absolutely thrilled with that. Um, they've been on, they've been to book signings with mm -hmm. me, many many of them, and uh, they're all real good at setting up the tables and engaging people uh, in conversation. And uh, so, as I said, it's it's really kind of become a, a family, family thing. business. All right, stand by, Gail. You and I have to take our final break for this hour. My name's Rob McConnell, and this is the Exxon on the Talk Star Radio Network. Gail Martin's our special guest. www.chroniclesofthenecromancer.com is her website, and she's the author of The Summoner and The Blood King in the Chronicles of the Necromancer series. I'll be back on the other side of this break with Gail Martin. Still to come on tonight's show, we have Robert W. Morgan. I have William Federer. And, of course, Patrick Cook with The Cook Report. We're coming to you live and around the world on the Talk Star Radio Network, as well as on Exxon TV. If you go to www.exxontv.com, you can watch and listen to our show live Monday through Friday, right here on Talk Star. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network. Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hi, I'm Larry Lawson, host of Paranormal Stakeout. With over 36 years in law enforcement, I have learned a few things. The most important is the proper gathering and preservation of evidence is vital to putting the bad guy behind bars. It's no different in the world of paranormal investigation. Whether it's the search for the afterlife, cryptozoology, UFOs, and extraterrestrials, how we gather the evidence, preserve that evidence, and present it to a jury of our peers will make the ultimate difference in proving the existence of worlds and entities that are beyond our imagination. 
Join me, Larry Lawson, every week on Paranormal Stakeout when, along with my guests, we'll take a journey to prove with indisputable evidence what man has struggled to believe for centuries. Go to xzbn.net for the broadcast schedule and check me out at paranormalstakeout.com. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. Yes, sing it, Frankie, baby. Welcome back, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. Gail Martin's our special guest. Her website is www.chroniclesofthenecromancer.com. Hey, Gail, it's always uh, great having a, an, a talented, inspiring author on the show who is so enthused about her books like you are. Thanks very much for joining us tonight. Well, thank you for having me. It's always fun and uh, love being here. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, so your kids, have they ever had an experience with the paranormal, things that go bump in the night and... No, they haven't, um, you know, fortunately, but uh, it's, you know, they're, they get to see the same TV shows that I'm watching, so they're quite familiar with the concept. Um, I think they, they all kind of err in the same direction I do, which is so uh, we're uh, taking it seriously enough that we don't go looking for it. All right, I have to ask you this. How does being a fantasy author specializing in the paranormal affect your everyday life? Um. You know, it's funny because there are um, there are folks who, I guess, kind of assume that everybody who writes, um, you know, detective stories mm-hmm. is a cop and everybody who writes westerns is a cowboy. So, you know, every now and then you run into folks who, I guess, you know, figure that you're a ghost hunter or something for a living, which, you know, uh, my background is in marketing, so <laughs> that's not exactly the case. Um you know, it, it causes a few people to scratch their heads. Most people, uh, I think, have been pretty pretty cool about looking at it and going, well, that's different, but that's pretty neat. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm a member of my local chamber of commerce, and they list my book signings and, and um, have shown up uh, in support at some of my signings. So actually, people make the transition pretty cool. It's just, um, you know, one of the more unusual part-time jobs. No, I don't think it's unusual. I think it's rather normal. Yeah. You know, normal for me. (laughs) Me too. Gail, thanks very much for joining us. Let our listeners know how they can get copies of your books and your website, please. Okay, well, The Blood King should be in stores and online everywhere uh, February 1st. So please look for it at your local bookstore or online at Amazon. And the website is www.chroniclesofthenecromancer.com. You can get excerpts from both The Summoner and The Blood King there, interviews, cover art, screensavers, all kinds of fun stuff. Spoken like a true marketing person. <laughs> Gail, take Thanks care of yourself. Andy. Always great talking to you. Take care. Thanks so much, Rob. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good luck on your tour. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye now. Gail uh, Martin, what a lady. You can tell she's got the marketing down pad, right? She's got creams, uh, you know, screensavers, this, that, and the other. You know, I admire somebody with that much gusto. When we come back from the news at the top of the hour, Robert W. Morgan will be joining me. We're going to be talking about Bigfoot as well as other species that seem to come and go. For example, how come we don't hear about the goat sucker anymore? I don't know if Robert can enlighten us on this, but that's one thing I'd like to ask him. And since he is somewhat of a UFO expert, I'd like to get his opinion on the Stephenville UFO, which, by the way, according to pilots now, has been uh, solved. We'll talk with Patrick Cook on 
the Cook Report about this later on tonight here in the Exxon. After all, this is a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. I'll be back after the news at six and a half minutes past as we continue live and around the world from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away.